All right, g'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Tip and Tricks. This time, how to install Spotty's DIY in your own shed. To make sure I don't stuff it up, I've got the expert here, Anthony from Drover. What's going on, mate? Oh, plenty. Plenty going on. So look, this is just gonna be a, a real quick, easy walkthrough video to show you guys exactly how to do it. A little bit of a step-by-step -step so you guys can have a crack at home. Um, so, ARB intensities, AR21s, going on the front of the GU camera car. To make it nice and easy, ARB also supply the uh, driving wiring loom. So it's basically pretty bloody easy. But let's get stuck in and see how we go. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, basically have a good look at the loom. And um, you know, I guess then you've got to sort of map it out in the engine bay how it's all going to pan out. Yep. Um, these are like a universal loom, so um, they're made for you know nearly every car, every situation. So uh, you can you know you can cut and extend, or you can you know shorten it or whatever. Yep. Um, you, you're better off to sort of just maybe just tuck wiring in out of the way uh, rather, rather than, than having up. extra connections that you know could give grief. So yep. um, yeah, we'll go map it out in the engine bay and see how it all sits out. Well, I think another thing to point out real quick was I did have a shitty set of spotties on the front of the old bull bar, which you would have seen. So we're probably going to go through, whip out all that old wiring um, as a first yep. point of call to give us a nice blank canvas. The wiring that there, it's not too bad, but they were a lot smaller light. Uh, the wiring cable was a little bit smaller. So we're going to pull all the old stuff out. Start from scratch. Let's get into it. All right, so we've whipped out um, all the old wiring. One thing that I did keep, um, and we'll run you through that shortly, was I already had a couple of nice switches on the dash, which runs through the firewall. Um, so we'll show you that bit in, in, in a little while. But all we're doing here, we've got the wiring loom, and we're just taking the two um, connectors here that clip onto the back of your um, actual physical light. I'm just passing them down, getting, getting ready to uh, clip them in. Yep, that's it. With the ARB wiring kit, obviously you get a nice um, diagram here that shows you where all your wiring is supposed to go. One thing you will need to do is figure out whether your vehicle is a positively switched high beam switch or a negatively switched high beam switch. Now this one is positive. Yes. This is a positively switched, so um, it actually does run you through that on the front. But make sure you find out what your vehicle is. We know this one's a positive switch. So I guess for legal reasons, um, your your spotties must be switched through your high beam. Correct, yeah. So that way, if you dip down on a low beam, you don't need to find another switch on the dash. It yep. just automatically dips the spotties with your high, um, with your headlights. Yeah. Which essentially means if you're driving through um, and there's a lot, uh, and there's a car coming your way, as soon as you knock it out a high beam, your spotties automatically turn off for safety reasons. You don't have to try and find another switch. Nice and easy. So this is the um, switching wire on the loom that will feed through the firewall yep. um, and connect up. Now, obviously I've already got a couple of nice switches from the old spotties that I will use running through that firewall. So we'll just connect that straight into there. Now we're going the next step here um, and any of the wires that are exposed, bit of pigtail, and um, we're just feeding this wire through the pigtail so it's nice and neat and uh, also that extra protection for your wire. So the pigtail is something that doesn't come included in the kit. Would highly recommend just run down to your, um, your local super cheap uh, whatever you, wherever you want to go and pick some of this up along with while we're going at it You probably need to grab yourself some zip ties um, yep. Some pig pig wire Anything else? Are we heat shrinking anything or we don't really need to with this kit? Pretty well everything with this kit comes with it to, to connect it up Yeah, um, yeah, it's literally just just little things like that Which you probably already have kicking around anyway if you do a few little jobs So yep. um, this stuff's cheap as chips anyway, so yeah Always go around to your mate's house that does mods all the time and go and go and pinch yourself some <laughs> So little tip for you um, if you are doing wiring It doesn't actually hurt to make the wiring just a slight bit longer than it needs to be um, for a couple of reasons one is um, um, if you make it too exact and there's a mistake somewhere and you need to you know, pull it apart uh, or even if someone wants to come along and, and, and pull it apart afterwards, it, it's easier 
to have a bit of wiring to deal with um, than it is to have a wire that's way too tight and you can't remove things around it and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to have it just a little bit longer than you need to and you can always tuck it down out of the way or you know tie it up out of the way somewhere. Another tip, everything is factory run on this right hand side of the vehicle. So we're basically just going to zip tie all of our wiring off to other factory mounted wiring. That obviously normally should keep it nice and neat and out of the way. Yeah, and um, while you're doing that, these are hoses for your washers. So there's a, a rear and a front one. Yep. Um, so many times I've seen these squashed flat. Zip so, tie them. Yeah, people zip tie them down. So uh, easy to do. And um, But yeah, you just got to be aware of what you're, you're tying zip things to. Too, yep. um, this conduit is very hard plastic. It's designed that way to protect the wiring that's inside it. Um, aluminium air conditioning hoses like or pipes like this one here um, if you have it so it's dangling and rubbing on there and you go on corrugated roads it will actually rub a hole in the aluminium okay so I've seen that happen so yep. um, another tip I guess just yeah stay away from things that that it can potentially rub on make sure it's always tied up quite well um, and yeah yeah follow along the factory wiring it'll end up nice and neat but um, yeah, you know, it's extra wiring, so you're always going to sort of see it. It's very hard to hide all of it. But um, more more zip ties are probably better than less. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Keep it all nice and tight. The last thing you want to do is have something come loose on the corrugations, which may or may not have happened to me. Go and check out the video where my car caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> and that is another hot tip. Like if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. Um, you know, all well and good to have a bit of a crack, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's better to have someone do it correctly, um, especially when it comes to wiring, than it is to, to have a go yourself. But if you're pretty handy on the tools and you know what you're doing and you understand the process, then um, yeah, by all means, get stuck in. Alright, so let's run you through where we're at at the moment. We fed um, this one cable here, it runs down and splits into two, that's for your spotties. We've then got the switching wire here, which uh, we ran through, poked through the firewall, which if you don't use pre-existing switches like I did, you've got a nice sticky back switch on off, and that's your switching wires there. So that's the cable that will be on your dash, it comes through to this switching wire here. Um, so that, that step's done. We've got that cable run down nice and neat in the pigtails. We then have the earth for the relay. Um, so that one will mount off to the body. We'll show you that momentarily. And then the last one that we have here is our positive cable that will run to our battery. And it has an inline fuse um, that will mount up somewhere nice and neat as well. So we're going to leave this little section for now. We're going to get the two spotty brackets put together, which... Um, Anthony's doing at the moment, come have a quick look. So they've got a nice stainless steel bracketry system there. Locking bolt. So they've got the um, yeah, security, security bolt. bolt, which means you need the special ARB tool, which means no one can come along with the Allen key and knock them off. Same with the main bolt, and that's a, what they call a Barry nut. So that's a security nut that has a very unique code. So each one of these is different. And um, yeah, you won't just be able to use one out of another one of these kits, it's different. So yep. it's specific to this kit. Well, there you go. So that goes the three bolts that they use to mount um, that to your bull bar. And then one thing that you want to make sure you do when you're installing this new kit is keep the specialty tools they give you in your glove box. Because if you do do a lot of corrugations or you do decide you need to pull the bull bar off or you want to change your spotties over, let me tell you, it is a pain in the ass if you cannot find the tools. So there's a little tip. But basically, nice stainless steel bracket that does give you your adjustment for your up and down on the spotty. We're just going to screw that on now to the uh, spotlight. Um, and depending whether you're running light bars or anything else, this is something that you might just want to keep in mind. I'm running one flood and one spot. So one that will give you that nice long distance down the road, that more direct straight beam. Uh, and the flood, which doesn't go quite as far, but gives you a nice um, wide uh, spread for your lights. So if all you're running is just the two spotties up the front, it is always a great idea to run one flood, one spot. If you've got a light bar on the roof um, that is designed for flood, you might be able to get away with running two spots. Yeah, the, and the larger ones you can get away with running 
um, probably two spots because they're actually quite a bright light so yep. therefore they do give that sort of ambient light across to the side whereas the small lights you probably run a, run a combination like this it's perfect there you go all right well that's what we're doing anyway i've only got i do have a light bar up here but it's a bit of an old one don't know if i'm going to keep it yet to be honest so um one flood one spot happy days all right so uh as far as mounting them onto the bull bar goes you've actually got your uh, your main middle hole which a lot of bull bars have already got this bull bar being an arb bar already has a spotty hole there um which will suit one of these holes here but we've still got to drill um the two outer holes in the bar so before you go putting the lights all together um keep one bracket spare and mark them out on the bull bar first before you go gung-ho and put them together all right so they've got little stickers on here spot and flood it's always a good idea to make sure uh you keep these on until you go and install them. So rule of thumb, um, we, we normally leave the spot on the uh, driver side. Yep. And then we chuck on the flood on the left. Now, not many people might um, realize this, but this is a good idea because? Because uh, basically the flood is gonna be able to provide a lot of spread over to one side and we drive on the left-hand side road here in Australia. So you wanna be able to see what kangaroos are lying in the grass and stuff um, ready to jump out. So yeah. Um, so if you've done your long distance touring, um, we drove along a bloody road coming back from the Northern Territory there and I've never seen so many kangaroos in my life and I mean hundreds along the left-hand side. They all, well, left and right, right? They, they, they wait on the side of the road, but you wanna be able to see the ones coming out on your left hand side of the road which is the one we drive on so it gives you that little bit more um, visual which is always handy so that's what we'll do Well, she's starting to come together. This is the exciting part. They're on now. They're all done up nice and tight. Um, after doing a few corrugated roads or first corrugated road, I'll probably just get the specialty tools and give them one last nip up. As far as angle goes, um, minus two degrees from level is where they recommend you have it uh, for your spotlight. So you shine just slightly over the horizon. Um, I'll have to basically get out at night time and adjust them properly. Um, but that's a nice little starting point. What are we up to now? Uh, so we'll connect the earth up. Now this is another important step. So this is the earth for your spotties. This is the earth for the relay. Yep. Um, they both need a really good body earth or if you can make it reach, which this one won't in this instance, but you could take it up to the negative battery terminal, which is good, you know, no bit of earth in there. Yep. Um, but if it's going to the body, just make sure that it's going to a nice metal surface that um, doesn't have you know paint in the way of interfering. So Sweet. Yeah, and that'll all work well. Something else we might touch on real quick while we're here is um, now I don't have a secondary battery under the bonnet, so we are going to my main battery. Mm -hmm. But because they are wired correctly to the lights when the car is off, the spotties will always be off and this battery can never get drained. Correct, yeah. And you would never wire driving lights to your secondary battery. It would only really be things like your, your fridge and things like that that should come off that. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a few reasons why. I won't go into the whole technical side of it, but it's just that, yeah, they, they draw too much power for a source like a um, secondary battery. So. All right, well there you go. Make sure your spotties are wired to your main battery and of course through the lights so that they can't be left on. We'll get this fuse, no, we'll get the relay mounted up, get this earth on. Yep. And then last final step is we just got to throw a bit of pigtail on the positive feed. Yep. Chuck that on the terminal and mount up the inline fuse. Yep. Woohoo! Cool, cool. Well, Anthony's just throwing the last couple of zip ties on. Uh, are you done? Yep. Moment of truth. Flip. Oh, there goes the drill. Flick them on. See if, see if they bloody work. Come on, Betty! No! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> All right, happy days. Look at that, shit hot. So now look, the main reason we haven't put these on just for the sake of it, we, um, we always tend to push pretty hard while we're on some of these filming trips. There is a lot of uh, long nights sometimes and uh, it was an absolute must to get a good set of spotties on the camera car. Um, I was sick of getting whinged at by the film crew last year. But look, spotties are on, absolutely stoked. Um, I hope you sort of enjoyed this little behind the scenes video to show you a little bit of a step by step on how to do it. Um, if you've got any comments, hit us below. Whatever you think I did wrong, let me know. And uh, we'll see you next time on uh, Explore Tips. Cheers, guys.